Hi there, I'm Andrew Miriam McComb. And I'm Dan McLaughlin of thedanplan.com. And welcome to Golf Getaway on the Gold Coast. When I heard Dan was coming to Australia, coincided perfectly with me coming up here to the Gold Coast. Obviously wanted to bring him up, show him around some of the great tourist attractions, but also share his inspiring story about the danplan.com. Dan, what is the Dan Plan? Well, so I decided about four years ago to quit my job and dedicate myself to learning how to golf, to practicing golf, to putting in 10,000 hours of deliberate practice into this game, starting from absolutely zero experience. So you never played golf before? No, I had like played a par three nine holer once or twice with my brother, but basically in 30 years of my life had zero experience. So you went from zero to quitting your job to playing golf all day every day? All day every day, practicing for the past four years. That's, that's my full time job now. So four years, how many hours have you done so far? Uh, a little over 5,000, roughly about 5,200 hours towards my goal of uh, 10,000 hours of practice. And how are you going so far? Pretty good so far. You know, I've gotten down to playing off about two right now and just uh, keep on pushing forward and I can see scratch right on the horizon. Well, here you've got a really interesting way you started. You started from one foot, eight hours a day for the first month. <laughs> how did that go? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it, there, there might be a little exaggeration, but so I did start from one foot and uh, I had to get to 100% of one foot putt, so that took a little while. But then the, the biggest milestone, the next milestone, is I had to get past 90% of my three foot putts. So that took like six weeks of you know, every day just going out and making three foot putts in the Oregon rain. Wow. So it wasn't, it wasn't like a brilliant Gold Coast sunny day. Uh, and, but I finally got to my level and I can move on to five footers. A lot of goal setting in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about goals because if you don't have goals, you know, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, it's, it's so easy to just like fall off track and lose progress. And how long did it take you to get off the putting green? <laughs> it took five months before I, I got a wedge and started chipping from the fringe. So for five months I did nothing but just putt. But at the time it was all I knew. So that was golf, that was practice. I drove the course as my daily job to just go and put in my hours on the putting green. And how did you do that and how did you stay focused while you're out there doing all of those, uh, those hours? You know, uh, to me it was, uh, yeah, I was really focused, but there was, there was some, a bit of tranquility or zen in it. You know, I'd go out and I had my goals and I'd try to hit them and, you know, there were tons of down days and tons of up days, but I, I was just so focused on getting to the percentages of the putts I wanted that it was just, it was my drive and is what got me to the course at 7 a.m. every day. And you talk about quality practice, so would you go out and do big blocks of hours or would you just go out and do 15 minutes or half an hour or how did it work? You know, it's all about how well you can focus. So some days you can go out and you can have high focus for, you know, a, a solid hour and you just know you're churning and you're learning and you're burning and you're doing good. Some days you go out and after 15 minutes you just feel brain dead. So you really have to kind of pay attention to how you feel and then just train when you are optimizing and getting the most out of it. And being so many facets to golf, how did you periodize all of it and know what to do first? And it must have been overwhelming. Yeah, I think that was kind of the, the, uh, the beauty of starting at the hole. So I just had to get the PGA Tour level from one foot putts and then two foot, three feet. And so it gave me structure and it gave me something to focus on because if I just went out with no experience and tried to to play uh, you know, a course like Arundel Hills where we are today, it would, be, it would have been overwhelming. So for me to have structure and to work away from the hole, it made it so the first time I had a handicap, I think I was playing off 12. Really? So when you first got your handicap, you're already off 12? Yeah, it was a 12.6 the first time I ever got a handicap, which was, you know, I was pretty excited about that. Wow, well it sounds like a lot of hard work. How did you keep the fun involved? Uh, you know, I mean, golf is, is intrinsically a fun game, so there's a lot of competition, I like competition, so even when I was just putting and chipping, there would be people at the course and I would challenge them in a little putting and chipping games, you know, for a drink or for a meal or something. So, you know, it gave you something to work towards and it gave a little bit of, or added a little camaraderie. 
Well, speaking of fun, how about I go and show you one of Gold Coast's favourite tourist attractions? <laughs> Let's check it out. It's Dan's first time on the Gold Coast. Thought I'd show him around in style. So we've got Mac here from Wildfire Tours. He's going to give us a deluxe tour of the Gold Coast on a Harley Davidson. I flew all the way to Australia from the home of Harley, United States, to go on my first ever Harley Davidson ride here in the Gold Coast. Let's go check it out. Cool, let's do it. So this is Wildfire Tours. What's, uh, what are we in for today? What, what can I expect? Well, we do, uh, we do a variety of different tours, so we can go down the beach, um, what we call a beach blaze. Uh, we can head out into the hinterland so we can get a bit of uh, uh, country riding in. We can customize them as well for, for you. So it depends what you want to do and what you want to see. What's your typical customer? I mean, who, who, who takes these tours? Oh, we have, uh, we have everyone from uh, mum and dad that come on holiday to, uh, uh, to special occasions where we always get the 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90s. So we do, we do a variety, but uh, uh, we specialize in larger groups. So we, we look at the corporate market and we have a variety of, of uh, Harleys, uh, but we also have classic cars. So we have Chevys and uh, some of the old uh, Mustangs and stuff like that. Nice. And hot rods. That's cool. Uh, what about the kids? Can kids come? Can we you can take, take a kid uh, on a bike? Yep, uh, by law, they've got to be eight. So as long as they're over eight, we can take them. Sounds cool. I want to do the beach blaze. So okay. where does that start and where are we going to go? We normally head straight down uh, to Burley and uh, we go up on top of Burley Hill and you can look back at Surface Paradise. Um, that's a really uh, cool ride and then we come back all the way up um, the beach. Well Dan, Wildfire Tours on a Harley, checking out the Gold Coast. What do you think? Oh, it was awesome, you know, I came all the way to Australia, first time on a Harley, we got to blow by some amazing beaches, and it's just a beautiful way to, to see the Gold Coast. Never would have imagined it, but I, I had a blast. Should we get back to the Gulf? It's about that time. We're here at Burley Golf Club, we're on the beautiful signature 17th hole, it's a 140 metre par 3, and with me is one of my friends, Nathan Bock, he's the vice captain of the Gold Coast Suns, and I wanted to introduce him to Dan because I reckon he's got a lot to offer. Nathan, what advice have you got for someone like Dan and the journey that he's undertaken? Yeah, well obviously I heard about the story, Dan, and uh, you know, I think it's very impressive definitely a massive challenge and you seem to be uh, tracking along really well and you know I suppose coming from myself who's played professional football now for 13 years I think um, you know it takes a lot of persistence dedication and I think the main thing as well is just to keep that enjoyment and keep that passion going you know because I think you, you can't commit to anything without that passion so that would be the few things I'd uh, advise. When did you first knew that that was your passion? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I, uh, I took a little bit of time off through my mid-teens. Um, I played footy since I was about seven and took a bit of time off. And I think during that time, I, I sort of missed playing football so much that uh, I realised that was my passion. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to play at the professional level, at the highest level for, you know, almost 13 years, which has been great. And do you think the uh, physical or the mental was harder in footy for you to learn and to, to kind of conquer? Yeah, I think definitely the mental aspect of the game. Um, you know, the, the physical aspects come with all the training and whatnot, but mentally to be able to keep uh, facing those challenges and, um, and dealing with all the pressures that come with playing elite sport is definitely the biggest challenge. Okay, this is the signature 17th par three. Why don't we have closest to the pin? Sounds good. It's all over it. That could be in the hole. Great shot. Maybe not this time, Mira. Just a little bit left. Oh, just. Looks like I got it this time, mate. An inch on the green. Nice strike, man. You got the KP. I've brought Dan to my favourite hole here on the Gold Coast. It's the 18th at Arundel Hills Country Club. It's a 494 metre par five. We've talked about Dan's Dan Plan story earlier, but I wanted to ask him, 
Dan, what do you think the deeper purpose is behind the Dan plan for you personally, as well as others? Uh, for me, it's always been about inspiring people. It's just about like showing people what's possible if you're willing to kind of pick up or stick with something brand new. So, you know, in, it, it didn't start about me and it didn't start about golf. It was, it was specifically a journey to show how far you can go to kind of help demonstrate to other people how far they can go if they're willing to put in the hard work. Very nice, well, beautiful looking Give it a crack. Hole. Give it a nudge. Very nice. Nice shot just short of the water here. Close. How do you overcome on a daily basis distractions like fear, doubt, and, and obviously bad rounds, bad practice sessions and that? You know, uh, at the very beginning, years ago now, uh, I would have bad rounds, bad days, just fears, anxiety, and I would let it get to me. But then I realized that everything is just kind of cyclical. You know, the bad times come, the good times come, and you're gonna have bad days, you're gonna have good days. So with the bad, you just kind of have to ride it out, and you know that the good's just right on the horizon. So if, if something major happens, like say you start to run out of money, or you think, how am I gonna pay for that tournament or whatever, how do you, how do you cope with that? You know, there's just, there's always a way. If you really want something, there's always a way to do it. So you just gotta figure it out. You know, if, if plan A doesn't work, go to plan B, go to plan C, and you know, you just go all the way down and eventually you figure out a way to make it happen. Okay, well plan A is the green and plan B is to lay up just short of those bunkers. I think I'm taking plan B on this one. Good luck. Great choice. Nice layup. What's the end goal with the Dan plan? Play on the PGA Tour. Do you think you'll make it? Oh yeah, definitely. And what do you think it's gonna lead to for you, if, whether you make it or not? You know, a lot of people ask that, and they ask what's next, and you know, what I wanna do after this, or if I'm gonna play on the tour, and for me, it's just so far out of my mind. I mean, I I visualize myself playing on tour and making the cut and playing on the weekend, but I don't really think that much about what's going to happen four years from now. You know, like I I, I kind of have more laser focus. I I think about today and think about this shot that we have right here. I don't really think about you know years from now. Well, speaking of this shot, how about you put it within three foot? Let's do it. Put. Thank you. Dan, what do you think the one thing you've learned is that you could share with the social golfer out there that's going to help their game? You know, I think the most important thing for a social golfer is just to have fun. I see so many people who are you just, they're just playing social golf, but they beat themselves up so much. And you know, if, the more you enjoy the game, the better you get at it. So if you just go out and have fun, you're going to be surprised at just how well you hit the ball. Oh yeah, well done. Thanks Dan, I hope you enjoyed the 18th at Arundel Hills. Beautiful hole. I wanted to give Dan a bit of a sneak peek into what success is gonna look like for him when he achieves his 10,000 hours. So I brought him up here to Hope Island on the beautiful signature 17th hole. It's a 180 meter par three. And I've brought Kota Kagasaki with me. He's a 17 year old child golf prodigy and he's gonna share some advice for Dan on what it's like to play at a higher level. Coda, what, what advice have you got for Dan? Well, for practice, I think, I mean, yeah, of course, driver, you know, long game's important, but the most important thing is having a great short game because even if you hit it good, if you can't putt, you're never gonna go deep. And, or well, to play on, a, on the big tour, you need to be able to obviously you know, make some birdies and go on their par. So after your experience with the Australian Open, what, what did you take away from that? And what do you think you need to do to be better, to do better next year? Well, when I play at, at the Australian PGA, um, well, my ball striking wasn't on and obviously my short game wasn't going as good as I hoped it would be. But yeah, um, well, 
for next time if I'm going to play on it, I'm definitely going to have to just grind out on my short game a bit more because yeah, I just you just can't play good golf with just having a good long game. You know, you always need to be able to um, scramble for pars and birdies and whatnot. So for me to get from where I am playing off about a two to where you are about six or seven strokes ahead, you think that the, the most important part for me would be to get back and just keep grinding on that short game? Yeah, uh, yeah as I said, long game is important. Um, you need to be able to um, stay in play all the time, but I think the most important thing is short game. So guys, beautiful golf hole. Calls for a nearest the pin comp. What do yep. you reckon? Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Let's do it. Oh, great shot. It's going right at it. Little bit to the right. Pin high on the green. Good shot. Oh, leaking left. It's good beauty. It might be right on top of mirrors. Try and get inside those two, Dan. Straight at it. It's good. Get up. Get more. Oh! oh. Hit that far behind it. Makoto is a good shot, but Mirror, you know, got another closest to the pin. Yeah. Well, I'll make him get it for a birdie, though. Okay. So, obviously, I need to work on the short game, but what about my long iron um, shot there? Well, it'll definitely help if you keep you out of the water. <laughs> you, you think? You think? Okay. All right, let's see this putt. So, in the States, they say you have to hit the little ball before the big ball, and I think back there I actually hit the big ball first, yeah. being the planet. Oh. Oh, good try, good try. Yeah, we'll give you a par. Ah. Golf's a pretty relaxing sport and damn well he's pretty laid back but I thought we'd rattle his cage a little. Check out the V8 Supercar's official driving experience. What do you reckon Dan? I have no clue what we're about to get into but let's get at it. It's great for racing, tough for golf. Uniforms. Do they wear hair nets in golf? Oh no, it's a man sport. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite comfortable. Hey Dan, how'd you go? Oh, brilliant. That is amazing. You want to go? My turn? Yep. Let's see if you can fit. I'll see if I get my head in. <laughs> you got a can opener? What do you think? Oh, my hands are a lot like my drive at the golf. A lot of power and so much control. It's mind blowing. If you're on the Gold Coast or you want to come down from Brisbane, come down and check out the world's only official V8 supercar driving experience. What a rush. Well, what a week we've had on the Gold Coast. One of Australia's best golf getaway destinations, that's for sure. And certainly one to put on the golf bucket list. Dan, being a first timer, what do you think? Well, I'd heard about the world-class beaches and they did not fail to please, but what I hadn't really heard about coming from the States is how many amazing golf courses they were, there are here. You know, I mean, we played a handful and every one was just an incredible experience. And then we got on the Harleys and that's something I'd never done before, so that was a trip. And those V8s, man, that was like twice as fast as they look on TV. So just all around, um, just an awesome place. It was like NASCAR on steroids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And how about this Burley Brewing? It's not bad either, is it? Oh, it's a great place. Well, good luck with the 10,000 hours. I'm sure we're going to see you on tour one of these days. Thank you. I'm Andrew Mira McComb. And I'm Dan McLaughlin of thedanplan.com. Thanks for watching Golf Getaway.
For more videos, special offers and information, go to golfgetaway.com.au or like us at facebook.com forward slash golfgetawaytv. Bye for now. Cheers. Cheers.